just take a moment, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and rest. Amen. Rest in His presence. Some of you have come in here and you've got burdens and circumstances that are pressing in against you, but just in this moment, rest. Because of Jesus, we can be at rest. Lord, we are so grateful that although we live in a whirlwind around us, you give us peace. A peace that passes understanding. A peace that rises us above our circumstances. A peace that guides us every day. We thank you for this moment of rest. For those who come in here tonight, overwhelmed Holy Spirit help them to breathe divinely in this moment give them a supernatural rest that is almost unexplainable but incredibly real open our hearts open our minds tonight to your word to your truth Cause us to follow you, that we may live in this rest. I thank you for each person that you have brought into this place, for each person who is watching live. May each and every one of us hear your word tonight. May we be overwhelmed that you are a God who gives us rest. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. For those of you who were not here last week, we started a new series on Wednesday nights uh, that we feel is incredibly important because Jesus doesn't just want to be accepted. He wants to be followed. And a lot of times we talk about accepting Jesus, which is legitimate, but he also says, follow me. And he lays out for us very clearly how we should live our lives. And he does that not out of some kind of religious obligation or as a control freak. He does that because he has your and my best interest in mind. And this series really is about learning how he taught us to follow him. It's almost like become an apprentice. Learn what the master teaches and design your life around the design that he laid out. And last week, Pastor Bayless began with the verb trust, because it all begins not with our work, but with his work, and what he did that we rely on, that we trust in. And now this week, we're looking at another verb that the Bible teaches very clearly in the New Testament, and it's the word rest. Now, this may come as a shock to some of you. There are so many things we should be doing to follow Jesus, so many other important things. Rest seems like something you do at the end of it after you've done all the stuff you need to do. Isn't rest something you do kind of on the other side of eternity? And yet if we don't get this part of follow me right, everything else will fall apart. When it comes to rest in our life, there are really kind of three ways we don't rest. Sometimes we don't rest in eternal life. Rest is the verb that's got to come after trust. Because if you learn about anything else Jesus commands you to do and you don't understand resting in your salvation, every other command will have the wrong motivation behind it. He says, obey me, and all of a sudden you'll be obeying him, not out of a place of rest in your salvation, but out of a pace of trying to earn some favor. And everything else he commands, if it's not framed in the fact that there is a grace and a rest for us, the enemy will use to distort it. And some of you are familiar with what that feels like when you're trying to do something to get God to behave or respond to you or prove yourself to God. There's a second way we don't rest, though. We don't rest in a meaningful life. We doubt sometimes if Jesus is enough. We know he saves us, but we want our lives to be meaningful and purposeful. So we go, I need Jesus and a good career. 
I need Jesus and a healthy bank account. I need Jesus and a meaningful ministry. Now, there's nothing wrong with a good career and a healthy bank account and a meaningful ministry. But if we're not at rest in the life he gives us just in being his child, if we're not at peace at that, then we're trying to add something onto it so that we can find life that really matters. When Paul says, I consider everything a loss compared to really being with Christ, knowing him. So we are to rest even in our identity in life. But oftentimes where we don't rest is when life gets challenging. And many of you in here are facing situations like I am. And you can find deep fear and doubt and stress. And oftentimes we think the only resolution to that is a solution. If God will answer my prayer, the circumstance will be resolved, and then I can rest. And the good news when Jesus says, follow me, is that you can rest in the middle of a circumstance that is yet to be resolved. You can find a peace and a comfort. And that's why this word rest becomes so important if we're going to follow him and pattern our lives after him, because rest is a key trait of our relationship with God. Think of this, go back to the Old Testament. The picture of the promised land. The promised land was a land of rest where God promised his people. Listen to what he says in Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is God speaking to the people. I will give you beautiful cities which you do not, did not build. Houses full of all good things which you did not fill. Hone out wells which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. You get the picture? You don't have to strive for this stuff, God says. I'm going to give it to you, even though you didn't strive for it. They had 40 years of the wilderness because they refused to believe God was giving them everything and it was already done, that the work had been finished. And the same thing can happen today in our life of faith. We work to complete a work that is already completed. We strive to defeat a devil who's already defeated he says, no, no, you got to rest in what I have done, but rest is not passive. Rest is active. We work really hard to produce a healing that's already given. We strive to get favor that he already has for us. Rest is understanding his grace in your life and living in that because what God wants desperately tonight, I believe, is to impart to us this idea. Stop struggling and start resting and believing in my grace towards you. Depend fully on God just like Jesus did for support, for help, for power, for everything. Rest is applied to every aspect of your life. You know, the Bible says Jesus taught, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Think about it. Loving God with every fabric of who we are. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Have a spirit rest. Don't try to acquire what Christ already gave you. Some of you are here tonight, and you're not at rest in that area. You know God loves you. You know God died for you. Jesus died for you. But there's kind of this unsettledness where how do I make sure that I'm okay with him, and he's okay with me. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. There is a thought rest where you don't have to overthink stuff. You don't have to figure everything out. You ever laid in bed at night and replayed conversations? You're thinking about stuff and thinking about stuff and thinking about stuff. You are giving God a headache because you're thinking so much. <laughs> and there is a thought rest where your mind can be at rest and oftentimes when we're not in the Word, so we don't have that in our mind, that's when we're not at rest with this. Rest is not just about saying, I don't have to think about stuff, I don't have to worry about stuff. It's about a position that you take in life. Love the Lord your God with all your soul. There's an emotional rest where you are free from worries, where you literally, as a promise of God, don't have to stress are you worried about something right now? Do you find yourself unable to forgive somebody? 
That's an absence of rest. There's a turmoil in your heart. Are you grateful or are you discontent? It's not just being a bad Christian. There's an absence of rest, of peace. You can see why it's so valuable where Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. First, you got to trust me. Then you got to rest in that trust. And then everything else that follows in how you pattern your life after my design, there will be a grace and a flow, an ease to that. Love the Lord your God with all your strength. There's a physical rest. Believe it or not, you do not have to go through life exhausted. You can get a good night's sleep. You can wake up in the morning feeling refreshed in your body because salvation is for our entire being. And if you're here and you are stressed out physically, you have a hard time going to sleep, you don't sleep well, you wake up, you need additives to sleep. The good news is Jesus says, listen, I want you to rest in every aspect, not just spirit, not just mind, not just soul, but in body as well, where you take a Sabbath and you have this rest. Friends, isn't it true? We miss too many moments in life because we don't know how to rest. About five years ago, I think it was, maybe six years ago, I was stressed out about some stuff. I was not at rest, and we had a family get-together. Some of my family flew in from the Midwest. There's about 25 family members who were all together having this great dinner. I missed the whole thing. I was present, but I missed the whole thing. My mind was somewhere else. My soul was somewhere else. So physically, I was there. And I remember going to bed that night, going, I missed out on four hours of an incredible family moment because I wasn't at rest. So this news is not a you better rest. Nothing worse than being stressed about resting, huh? <laughs> there is a pattern that Jesus gives us so you don't miss family moments, so that you sleep well, so that you're confident of your position with God through Christ, so that your soul is at rest. Truly, the only work that's left for us to do is to enter his rest. And Jesus teaches us how to enter into his rest. So if you're here and you are a Christ follower and you say, wow, last weekend, I, last week on Wednesday, I discovered I got to trust him. Now I want to rest him. Here's the teaching he gives. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. Just a few verses or they'll be on the screens. He knew we would struggle with this. And here's what he says. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. And in these passages, he gives us three words. He says, come, take, and learn. And it's in these three words that we discover how we follow Jesus by resting through life. Let's take a look at these three verbs. First, come. He says, come to me. The response from stress is not to run away from people. It's not two weeks in Hawaii on the beach. The response from stress is to run to God. Why would Jesus need to tell his followers, you got to come to me? Isn't it obvious? Because he knew we would be tempted instead of rest to lead to relief. God is not talking about getting relief. He's talking about getting rest. What's the difference between the two? When you want relief, here's what takes place. You're stressed about something, you make quick decisions. Just to fix or escape from that stress. When you're overwhelmed with something, you become over-exaggerated with it. You feel like you're drowning when you're not. And a small problem becomes a major problem because you're not at rest with it. When you're not at rest, you worry with others. There's physical and emotional damage, and you just want relief from that. When you're looking for relief, one of the ways you do that is through avoidance. 
The trivial way is a short-term vacation. The more serious way is addiction. Where you say, okay, I need relief from this. And in an audience this large, there are some of you who know exactly what I'm talking about. And there is no condemnation in this church from heaven for you. There is not only a solution, but there is a savior. Relief is about escape. And it will lead you to an avoidance that could happen through an addiction. Relief is about almost a hopelessness where you give up. The most serious of that is where you quit on life because it gives you the ultimate relief. And some of us are aware of people who have strived towards relief and taken the ultimate decision just because they needed the relief. Jesus has come to me not because he wants you to race towards relief, but because he wants you to run towards rest. Come. Don't escape from life, but enter into him. So what does it mean to enter into his rest? Instead of quick decisions, you have these faith-filled decisions. You have this position in your heart and your soul, a trust in him, a knowledge of his word and what it says, and your position to go, okay, I've got to make some decisions. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but I make them out of faith from his word. To rest in him means you have an accurate perspective. You don't over-exaggerate, but there's an in with the Holy Spirit where you have an honest perspective of what's happening and there's a healthy rest in that. To rest in him means that you inspire others where your words reflect a rest, not a panic. I had a conversation. I'm, this, this is how crazy it is. I'm preparing for this teaching this week. I'm having a conversation with a family member and out of my mouth came words of panic. And I thought, God, are you teaching me just so I have an illustration to shame myself in front of a thousand people? <laughs> Do an inventory on your words. If they are words of panic, are they words of rest? Where we have this influence of others. That's what it means to be at rest. That's what Jesus knew would be one of our greatest battles, especially in the whirlwind of today's society. So he says, you got to come to me where we inspire others, where we deal with reality. True rest is not a hiddenness. It's the ability to engage what's going on in life, but with a hope that you have. You go, wow, I would love that. I would just so embrace that. There's only one way you acquire this kind of a rest. Come and I will give you rest. You got to start by coming to Jesus. It sounds kind of trivial. It sounds kind of, you know, quaint in a sense. But at the very core of it is if you don't come to Jesus on a regular intentional basis you will be drawn to other things relief will take over rest so do a quick inventory how much of your approach towards dealing with the stress that you are under because everybody deals with stress life is a battle there are hardships how much of your approach in your mind in your words and your actions is relief and how much of it is rest? Where you can navigate it in faith and in hope and in truth. And when you have that sense, okay, I still have some growing to do. That's why Jesus said, follow me. Following him, being an apprentice is not, wow, I came on a Wednesday night, I learned some stuff, I achieved it, I've arrived. It's a lifelong pursuit of saying, I want to grow in my rest. And if part of me is doing relief, then I need to make this transition where I can do more of rest. And Jesus teaches how, us how to do that with a second verb. He says, take. Take my yoke upon you. Now, he gives us a metaphor that I want to explain to you. Look at the screen, you'll see a picture. Here's what he's referring to. He lived in an agricultural society. And a yoke was a piece, a harness that would go on two oxen, if you will. And there was a large, old, wise oxen and a younger oxen that was there. And the harness was necessary. 
Now what Jesus is teaching undoubtedly is when we hook ourselves up to Jesus, then we learn how to live life in rest. But it's not just a matter of following his pattern. The yoke is really important. Because if you have a wise old cow and a young cow and there's nothing that hooks them together, the young cow will not by intuitive nature just do whatever the old cow is doing. There is a need for a piece of harness. There's a need for something that links them together, a yoke. In the Bible, the yoke is called the covenant. That God makes a covenant with us and we make a covenant with him. So that when we rest, the basis of our rest based upon the metaphor of this yoke, is based upon an understanding of the covenant that we have with God. Now here's how a covenant works in the Bible. A covenant is when one party sets all the stipulations. It's like you're having this agreement, this arrangement. And one party says, here's how what it looks like. Here's what I'll do. Here's what you'll do. And the other party simply says, yes or no. And when you read through the scriptures, Genesis to Revelation, you discover this is what God has done. He has laid out fully. It started with Abraham when he made a covenant with Abraham and he made this pathway, but Abraham didn't walk through it. God walked through it. He says, I'm laying it all out for you. Here's what I will do. I will send my son. He will die. He will resurrect. I will send my spirit. I will redeem you. He does all that work, lays all that foundation. Here's what you'll do. You'll receive it by faith. And then because you've received it, you'll follow me. Here's what I'll do. I'll present an eternity, a new heaven and a new earth, and you have a choice. You can say, yes, I will do this, or no, I won't do this, but you create this kind of a covenant, and he gives us the best illustration for it throughout the scriptures to understand this. Being at rest and following Jesus isn't just about following some lifestyle or doing what he says. It's about understanding this covenant, this harness that hooks us together, and the illustration given in scripture is that of a marriage. When I counsel young people who are getting married, when I do a wedding, I always say this. I say, listen, it's a common statement to say that love makes a marriage work. I actually think it works the other way. Marriage makes love work. Love doesn't sustain a marriage. Marriage sustains love. Here's why. 33 years ago, my wife and I got married. We love each other. We loved each other then, we love each other now. True confession, during the 33 years, there are some times when love leaves the house. <laughs> and we look at each other going, what in God's name were we thinking? <laughs> and if you've been married, you understand this. You're going, who is this person? And what happened to the lovely woman I married? Who is this man? Where did his wonderful twin brother go and leaving this evil twin brother <laughs> love is gone it's at the moment that love is gone that marriage kicks in the covenant of marriage sustains you when love is gone love will come back but if you don't have the covenant of marriage and love is gone you know what happens you bail you just bail you go i didn't sign up for this this doesn't help me, I'm gone. But when you have a covenant of marriage symbolized by a ring, then you go, no, I have this harness, a vow I've made, a commitment I've made to my spouse and to God. And that harness keeps you together during some difficult times so that you are together when the love comes back. And he gives this illustration of how a marriage covenant illustrates God's covenant for us. Last week, my family and I had an incredible opportunity, and we went together to Israel for about 10 days. And my family is sitting in the place where they believe uh, very probably Jesus died and then was buried in the garden tomb, and we're taking communion together. It's my wife, myself, our three kids, one son-in-law. And as we're taking communion together, I'm looking at my family going, wow. There are moments, if I didn't have a covenant with Marie, I'm not sure we would be here right now. But the covenant really is what brought us to this place. Jesus says, listen, you've got to understand the covenant. Come to me, take my yoke 
upon you. It means to understand that he has made this covenant. And the way that we illustrate the covenant, the Bible teaches, is through water baptism and through communion. Every time we take communion here, we are going, I'm in a covenant. That's right. Here's what Jesus has done for me. And when you know the covenant, here's what takes place. You realize that you rely on Jesus to do the heavy lifting. That when you're yoked to him, just like the metaphor of the cows, the yoke is not a picture of bondage. It's a picture of support. If you don't have the idea of the covenant, what will happen is, I'm not sure he supports me because I'm kind of going off the trail. But if you know the idea of a covenant and what he has done, I rely on him to do all the hefty lifting and I can be at rest. I remember Jesus' work in making the Holy Spirit available. That yoke, that covenant, it's sealed by the Holy Spirit in me. When you are in a whirlwind, it's really easy to forget that. And it disappears, and all of a sudden, I'm on my own, and i got to follow Jesus. No. You're in a covenant. You recognize that you're linked permanently together. The yoke isn't just for me. It's for him. And I have this covenant. What does that practically mean? In following Jesus to enter into rest, I'm going to focus more on the covenant than I am on my commitment. Now, don't misunderstand me. There's an intentional commitment we make in faith. But if you make a commitment to say, Jesus told me to rest, i got to follow his way of resting, without having the idea of the harness, the covenant, you will find yourself striving, doing it out of your own effort. But if it's based on a covenant that he has given to you, then you go, I'm just an apprentice. I'm that skinny cow who doesn't know what he's doing, but I'm hooked up to the wise cow. So I'll just go where he leads, and you carry an apprentice identity. You basically have three options as you navigate life. You can do it alone, you can do it with the wrong person, or you can do it with Jesus, the master. And if you're here and you're not at rest, look at verse 30. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He says this covenant, it's not a burden. This covenant is not a religious duty. Religion will put a yoke on you that will weigh you down. This one, it's light. So I say, I'm going to come to Jesus. I'm going to understand and know and embrace by faith that covenant. And then he says this last verb, learn, learn from me. Perhaps the greatest absence of rest we have is in our own identity. It's like we're created in God's image. And yet our image sometimes becomes the primary source of stress. Jesus describes himself in this passage as gentle and humble in heart. He didn't panic. Wasn't uptight. He faced hardships and tribulation like we'll never imagine. But he was at rest because he knew his identity. And you will only really be at rest when you know who you are by living in his identity and his design. So I had a friend who was going to teach me how to go snow skiing. I always wanted to learn how to snow ski. So he was going to teach me how to go snow skiing. He was a great friend. We could have had a whole day really enjoying each other, learning how to ski. But when I got there, I wanted to be able to ski really well because I was a klutz and I wasn't skiing well. And people were kind of looking at you. You know, when a five-year-old kid skis by you really fast, everybody's kind of staring at you. And I thought, I'm going to learn to ski really well. I've got to do this really well. So instead of spending the day with him and learning from him, and enjoying his presence, laughing when I fall and he helps me up, I just took off down the hill. Yeah, you can imagine what happened. It wasn't the fact just that I didn't learn to ski or crash. It was the fact that I missed an afternoon with a good friend. That's what the yoke is about. It's not about learning a certain skill That makes you a better Christian. It's about doing life, experiencing it with Jesus and his rest. Come to me. Learn from me. Become like the teacher. Am I really doing life together with Jesus? That's the whole purpose of this Wednesday series. Following him is not just learning skill sets. It's about doing life with him because you will never be at rest if you are trying to be someone that he never designed you to be 
Only when you discover who you are in Him, then you're truly and fully at rest. That's why He says, I'm humble. Rest is when you know that you're accepted. Because here's the reality. We are really not striving for an identity. We are striving for acceptance. And we think certain identities will get us an acceptance. And when we strive for an identity to get acceptance, that's when there's no rest. But when we come to Jesus, and we take on His identity, and we understand the covenant, and that's where our faith is registered in, we take communion and we know this is what he has done so I can be at rest. I'm doing life his way. I can be at rest. I'm following him. I can be at rest about my finances because I'm following his pattern. I tithe. And when I tithe, I do it as a worship and I do it cheerfully, but I also rest because I'm following his way and then it's kind of on him. If I'm going to do it my own way, then I'm not going to rest because it's on me. He says, listen, you have to make this choice. Before you do anything, before you follow him in any way, start from a position of trust. Jesus, what you did for me. And then move to a position of rest, of peace, of confidence, of hope and faith, of this sense that the world cannot understand because it is not just a natural, it lift me up. It is something divine in you where there is like a, wow. When we do this series, one of the things we wanted to do was to give you some practical ways that you would be able during the week to begin to dabble in this, apply it in a certain way. I want to give you just some really practical ideas. If you look at the screen, what does this mean to be able to do this? How do you rest? What does the assignment look like during this week? Here's what coming to Jesus can look like in the most practical ways. Read a psalm every morning and evening. If you are here and there is stress and you are not at rest, read a psalm. One of the primary purposes of the psalms is to present and generate a rest in us, a faith, a hope, whatever it may be. Make that a habit just for this week. See if doing that helps his presence. Say a daily gratitude prayer. When Philippians says, you know what, when you come to God, don't be anxious. You know what that means? Be at rest. But it says you've got to wrap your prayers in gratitude. Why? Gratitude creates contentment. A lack of gratitude creates a discontentment. And when you pray out of a discontentment, there isn't faith in there. There's panic in there. So Paul says you've got to wrap your prayers in gratitude because there will be a contentment and there will be a rest. A confidence in him. So say a daily gratitude prayer. Just do it for this week. Next Wednesday when we move on to the next thing, you can stop playing gratitude prayers if you want to. Try it for a week. See if it helps you come to a greater place of rest. Tell a friend your stress and pray together. If you're here right now and you are carrying a burden, it's okay that you don't have the capacity on your own to relinquish that burden off your shoulders. That's why Paul taught in another New Testament letter, carry each other's burdens. you got to tell somebody, I am not finding rest with this issue. Would you pray with me? And we do that together. We're going to do that in a few minutes for ourselves. That's how we do it as the body of Christ. Sleep healthy. I can't stress this enough. God created us holistically. Our body affects every aspect of our being. You cannot go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and think your mind is going to be at rest during the day. Let's be honest. For most of us, after 11 o'clock, nothing good happens anyways. So sleep healthy, whatever that looks like for you. God will use that, and he'll honor your intent. Take a walk in the park. We were made from dirt. And there's something that happens when you get out of the concrete into his nature. Actually, I want to show you a picture. Take a look at this picture. Believe it or not, this is a picture of Pastor Robert Favela. Now, for those of you who don't know, Pastor Robert Favela is our leadership development pastor. This is him. What he does is he literally takes a tent to the park and he takes naps in a park with a tent, like a homeless person would. He's the only pastor of a church where moms and little children go around him because they don't know who is this person in the tent. He's live streaming, right? He's probably live streaming from the tent right now. But he has an incredibly challenging job here. 
He's in charge of leadership development, volunteerism. There's an enormous responsibility he carries. And I really commend him because he knows this helps me do a better job at Cottonwood. If you need to go out and buy a tent, then actually you don't need to. He'll make room for you. Just kind of <laughs> snuggle in alongside of him. <laughs> this week, break your habit. Take a walk on the beach. Go into a park. All right, rest of the list. Play worship in your car. If you are stressed, now I'm not one of those advocates that say every time I get in a car I'm going to listen to worship. No, I like to listen to other stuff too. Sometimes I like to listen to nothing. I always like to listen to my wife though. Let's get that straight. <laughs> but if you're not at rest, why is this important? Because the Bible says worship ushers in the presence of the Lord. So if you are not at rest, mind or soul, this week, after this week, you can go back to Death Leopard or whatever you listen to, doesn't matter. But for this week, play worship in your cross. Trust him by obeying his will for an area of your life. Now here's where we got to be really honest. If there is an area of your life where you know is out of alignment with his design, there's a great probability that you will never find rest in that area. Because you haven't trusted him with it. If there's a relationship where you need to forgive somebody, but you have dug in your heels and says, I'm not going to do that, you won't find rest in your soul. If you are not managing your money according to a biblical pattern, you will not find rest in your mind. You will worry about it. If you are detached from the body of Christ and Christians, you're not connected, you're kind of trying to do this thing alone, you will not find rest in your heart because the assurance of our salvation comes as we gather together before him. Put that list back up, will you? Look at this list. See if one stands out to you right now. Make a commitment to the Lord. Okay. For the next seven days, till we come back here next Wednesday and tackle another area in which we're supposed to follow Jesus, here's what I'm going to do. Commit yourself to do something. Because here's how it works. Any small act of faith on your part, honor on your part, God's going to honor that. You're going, really? Going for a walk in a park is going to make a difference? When the Holy Spirit knows the intent of your heart, it'll make a world of a difference. Listening to a song in my car, because God is involved, come to me, take my yoke upon me, learn from me. The desire of Jesus is that you would live and navigate all of life in rest. Give him the opportunity this week to do that. Would you stand to your feet with me? Here's what we do as part of this series, is we take a few minutes, we're not done yet, we take a few minutes so that we can unpack this. Why? Because that's what he taught us. We're apprentices, learning to follow him. He says, listen, do this together. He had 12 disciples, they were always talking with each other, praying together. If you look at the screens, we're just going to take a few minutes. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take two or three minutes in groups of four or five and ask yourself, be honest about this, where do you struggle to rest and what will you do this week? to come to Jesus and find rest. If this is awkward for you, you don't have to talk. Just stand and smile. We're all cool with that. <laughs> but you may discover following his way may really help you. So take a few minutes to be honest and say, here's where I'm struggling to rest. Here's what I'm hoping I can do this week that may help. And then we're going to take a few minutes and pray for each other, carrying each other's burdens that we can enter into rest. Go ahead and turn around to four or five people and do this. Family. So as Pastor Hol Joel Holm has said, this is the point in this message where we will be interacting and reflecting on a few questions. And I am here with my co-host, Candice, and we'll be doing that together. Hey, everyone. Yeah, Pastor Joel has everyone in the sanctuary getting together in little groups. And we don't want to leave you hanging. So we came out here to kind of have our own little small group time as yeah. well and be able to engage with you. Um, there's actually going to be a poll that's going to come up a little bit later. Or we also want to hear from you on social media. Mm -hmm. um, but let's go ahead and get on right into it. And yeah. so, you know, Hannah, mm -hmm. uh, where do you struggle with in rest? Mm -hmm. 
I would have to say I struggle physically resting because I am so busy sometimes with school and work and finding time to really Sabbath can be hard for me. And so definitely just physically just staying still. So body. Yes, body yes, for yeah. sure. What about you? You know, for me, I think the biggest struggle for me is like my mind. Mm. Um, it's going constantly. Yeah. I've got work, I've got family, I got my, my daughter, I've got, you know, friends, I got so much going on all the time that I'm just constantly, constantly thinking and thinking. I mean, I even find myself in the middle of the night waking up just constantly thinking about the next thing that has to happen. And yeah. so I know the biggest thing for me is rest um, in my mind, mm -hmm. um, just to be able to kind of shut everything off and allow even just the Holy Spirit to speak, you know, to me and, and, yeah. and be able to hear him uh, without everything going on in the background as well. And so, um, yeah. So I think probably, yeah, for me in the mind. But, um, you know, we want to hear from you guys as well. So Absolutely. actually, like I said, there's going to be a poll that comes up. You can click on uh, whether it is uh, where you need to find rest in your mind, your body, your heart, your soul, what it is that you guys need to rest in as well. You know, we're going to be having some questions and interactive elements on social media. So follow us on Instagram because that is going to be there as well. We want to hear from you. Um, also into the next question is uh, what will you do? Uh, how can this week's assignments help you come to Jesus to rest fully in? In him mm -hmm. um you know pastor joel talked about yeah. he had that whole list of things we talked about reading a psalm every morning uh doing a daily gratitude prayer yeah. telling a friend and praying with them mm -hmm. sleep healthy which is probably yes. part of both what we need yes amen. Uh, taking a walk <laughs> in the park like pastor robert or taking a nap in the park like mm -hmm. pastor robert um also playing worship in your car trusting him by obeying uh, his will for your area in your life and so um what area do you, or what assignment do you think you're going to implement this week? I think I'm going to implement two because two really stuck out to me. The first one is the gratitude prayer. Just starting every morning just with a prayer of gratitude because I know it can get so easy to just get up every morning, go, go, go. Like I said, like my physical body is what I need most rest. So just making sure that I get up and just start with thanking the Lord for like even helping me get up that morning. Yeah. And then also taking a walk in the park. I feel like when you, even when you're outside and you're just surrounded by God's nature and just seeing his glory and his majesty, it's, it can, it's really amazing. And so I think that's one, those are the two things that I'm really going to implement into my routine. How about yeah. you? I think for me, I, I, one of the things that I feel energizes me is people. Mm -hmm. And so by telling my friends that I'm stressed, having a moment, even today I had lunch with a friend and we just sat and we talked. And I just, even after that time with her, I felt energized. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's really cool because I have friends that, yeah, will call me up, how are you doing? And we'll pray together. And it's just, yeah, it's really, really good. So I think community is such a huge part of rest, even though mm -hmm. it kind of keeps you busy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think just being able to do that with people that can help you kind of get out of that rut of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, I think probably that was the biggest one. And then mm -hmm. also, I, I kind of agree with you as well as doing the daily gratitude. I think starting your morning with a, a thankful heart is always probably yeah. the best way to start mm -hmm. your day. And so uh, yeah. those are those for me. Um, but, you know, you know, Pastor Joel also said at the end to, to be praying for each other. And if you're at home right now and you've got a group of people, I encourage you, you guys take some time together, mm -hmm. pray with each other, uh, pray for each area for rest in each of your lives, the area that you are uh, struggling with the most. Yes. Um, but we just wanted to actually take a moment to be able to pray for you as well. And so Hannah's going to go ahead and do that. Yes. God, I just come to you right now. Just anyone under the sound of my voice, God, I pray that you give them rest. Even when their answer, their questions haven't been answered yet or they're just feeling unsettled about anything, Lord, I pray that you give them rest. I pray that you give them peace. I pray that you let them know that you are God and that no matter what they're going through, that you have them and that you will never leave them regardless of whatever is happening, God. And I just pray that you help them be still and know that you are God and that you have everything under control. And I just ask for peace and guidance and clarity to anyone that needs it, God. And I just pray for your hand of your hand of guidance and and love and peace. And God, I just help anyone who's listening that I pray that they're able to rest in you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That was great. All right. Awesome. Well, you know what? In just a little bit, uh, the worship team's coming back up right now. We're going to close out the service with just a time to of refreshing, of rest, and yes. just worship. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and throw it over to them. And we will be, Hannah's going to be back at the end to connect with you. So stick yes. around. Hey, Please. don't forget those don't polls. Go. We want to hear from you on social media. <laughs> yes. Follow us at Cottonwood Church. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.